to see all of you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we have a lot of uh, important folks. All of you are important, and there are some folks that's been elected that are here. Of course, I'm glad to be joined here by um, Valerie Jackson, the, uh, the, the, the late uh, wife of uh, Mayor Maynard Jackson here. Wave your hand, Valerie Jackson. Thank you for being here. I'm seeing a few. I see uh, Shook and I see Bond, but I know there's so many, many more. Uh, oh, there they are. They're standing up. All right. There we go. Westmoreland, Winston, Dozier, Hillis. Um, and I'm sure there's probably others. All of the city council members that have made this possible, I thank you all for being here. I see uh, uh, Council President Shipman as well and Shook. And uh, a lot of my cabinet members are here, including uh, the chief of police, chief of fire, uh, chief uh, Sherbaum, Chief Smith, as well as our a number of other leaders. But I just thank you all for being here. More than 40 years ago, this city that we all uh, that we all love started to make it headlines across the nation and really across the world. And this was not how Atlanta wanted to make headlines. We did not want to capture the world's attention in this way, uh, but we did. At least 30 of our young children and young adults had been abducted and killed and were missing. The horrific events were given a name which was the Atlanta Child Murders. Those of you who were here during that time know just how on edge this entire city was in that time, during that period. Mayor Maynard Jackson, he wanted to find a way to keep kids safe during this period. He was the first African American mayor and this began to happen and he wanted to find a way to not only resolve this and bring the people to justice, but he wanted to make sure that kids in Atlanta were safe. So he created what became known and called Camp Best Friends, offering a safe haven for the city of Atlanta's children. And Mayor Bottoms and I know, as so does uh, Chief Smith and those of us that were around during that time, just how important Camp Best Friends was, as well as how tough that time was during the Atlanta Child Murders. I was here, I was about four, five, six years old, and we were uh, in the midst of it, on the west side of Atlanta. Um, and also the east side of Atlanta as well. Um, and so that was a time of growing up that really fortified us and brought us all together. You had to be in when the street lights were on. You could, you would see vans go in your neighborhood and you would not uh, even, you would clear the streets to make sure that you would not be a victim. Everybody was on edge at that time. And so uh, I attended Camp Best Friends and even my daughter now, who is now 18, she has attended Camp Best Friends. So an initiative that was born out of tragedy became one of the largest city operated uh, summer programs in the country and it's still going strong today. So I thank you, uh, Atlanta Parks and Recreation. I see you, Commissioner Cutler, and all of your team for that leadership. Now you fast forward more than 40 years later my predecessor and my friend, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, recognized that we needed a way that could help us to continue healing in this city. Art has the great ability to do that. And so, uh, art has a way to help heal a community from trauma that it has faced. And so Mayor Bottoms recognized that art could help provide a way for us, for this current and future generation, to honor those that have passed away in this tragedy. And so now I would like to bring Mayor Bottoms up to offer her reflections on the significance of this day and this art. Mayor Bottoms. Thank you, Mayor Dickens, for the invitation to be here today. I did not expect that it would be so emotional. Uh, so I should have written something down and I didn't. In the words of Pearl Clegg, 
Some will say it was a long time ago, but to us it seems like yesterday because we remember everything. Uh, as Mayor Dickens said, we were children and we remember the fear. We remember our parents holding us close. We remember communities frozen. As a parent, I think of the ages of these beautiful children. Many of them were the ages that my children are now. So to the families, uh, what I do know to be true is that Mayor Maynard Jackson cared deeply about each family and each child. And as he, along with so many in the Atlanta Police Department and the FBI and so many others work diligently to find the person responsible for taking these young lives. Uh, we too remember that they were your children. They weren't just names. They were human beings that you loved dearly. And so, Camille, thank you um, to the artists, uh, in the memory of Michael Lankford and Frank Ski and so many others who have made sure that we have not forgotten these precious souls. I am so honored to have played a part in making sure that this memorial will be here for an eternity. So that every single person who passes the grounds of Atlanta City Hall remembers that those children mattered to us then, they matter to us now, and they will matter to us for generations not yet born. I know um, in the absence of Chief Shields, who also worked diligently to make sure that APD was providing resources and support, I know that progress has been made uh, in analyzing the DNA, and, and I know that there's still many answers to be had, but it's my hope uh, that one day soon, Mayor Dickens, we'll be able to share that information with the public as well, whatever information may be available, so that it can continue to bring solace and comfort uh, to the families who are here today. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you all. Good morning. I'm Camille Russell Love. I'm the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs, and I want to thank all of you for being here today as we dedicate the Atlanta Children's Eternal Flame Memorial. As Mayor Bottom said, in 2019, she issued an administrative order to establish the Mayor's Advisory Committee, Atlanta Children's Memorial Task Force, to determine a lasting and appropriate tribute for the victims and their families, and to serve as a testament that those lives mattered. The legacy of Atlanta's missing children impacted this city in a way that cannot be forgotten. And under former Mayor Bottoms and current Mayor Dickens' leadership, the Atlanta Children's Memorial Task Force worked together with the city to conceptualize a lasting tribute to honor the lives lost to that tragic period in our history. We also have, as a part of today's ceremony, the lib literary work of Tayari Jones, who wrote Leaving Atlanta as a testament to her own experience as a young person in Atlanta during that time. I'd like to especially thank her for her contribution. And at this time, I'd also like to thank the task force for their tireless efforts to bring this memorial to fruition. So if any of the task force members are here, if you would wave your hands or stand up, thank you. I'd like to also thank the tireless efforts of the Department of Enterprise Assets Management, the Department of Parks and Recreation, and my own public art team uh, of the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs for all the work that they did on getting this monument to fruition. For far too long, the families of the victims, some of who join us here today, and many Atlanta residents have not had a tangible way to pay homage to those lost. 
thanks to the dedication of all those involved, that changes today. When the time came to conceptualize this artwork that honors the lives of these young people and the efforts of their families, international sculptor and designer Gordon Hooter and partners envisioned artwork that could create a space for reflection and healing. Gordon Hooter's work has been exhibited in museums and galleries across the country and recognized throughout the world. Much of his work is inspired by utilizing man-made materials against nature's backdrop to illustrate the presence and impact of our lives and our actions within the world that holds us. His artwork that we are dedicating today pays homage to the young lives lost, the continued dedication of their loved ones, the great loss suffered by the city of Atlanta, and the efforts of those who aided in search and recovery. So if there are any members of the search teams, recovery teams, the Atlanta police, the FBI, the GBI, who aided in these efforts, we'd also like to acknowledge their service today. So if any of you all are here, thank you. Made of steel, this memorial design illustrates the impact of a community that withstands inequality against all odds and remains determined to persevere. Within the artwork, Mr. Huter has engraved the work of City of Atlanta Poet Laureate Pearl Clegg, a poem for our victims, commemorating the lives of the victims. So at this time, I think it's best for you to hear from the artist himself here to share his inspiration for the intent and the design of the memorial, everyone, please welcome Gordon Huter. Good morning, everybody. So much has already been said, so I'll, maybe I'll keep it kind of short. Um, my name is Gordon Huter. I'm from Napa, California. And it is truly humbling and an honor to be in a position to create this for you. The art is not about me, the art is about this community. My thinking was to create a place that would memorialize, celebrate, and eternally love these souls that were taken too soon. The shape of the sculpture is such that it, it's an embrace. It's there to hold you, it's there to hug you, it's there to cherish you and keep these, um, the memories of these young lives fresh. It's also there to educate. You'd be surprised to hear how many people don't already starting to kind of becoming a faded memory or the younger generation that don't know anything about it um, but they will come here and they will be inspired and they will learn and we always hope that looking forward that we could learn from the past. At the end of the day, this installation is about love. It's about love for these young souls. It's about love for one another. It's love for a community, and this is my gesture of love to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. You've created for our city the place where we can honor these lives in the public space, so thank you. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Artist Selection Committee uh, for making this day possible we couldn't have done it without their efforts. So at this time, we will have a musical selection from local student Kofi Martin. And while we take in the talent and the sounds of Mr. Martin and his mellophone, I'd like to ask former Mayor Bottoms and Mayor Dickens to take their places as we prepare for the remembrance portion of our ceremony today.
just just you can just read them all and get that. Edward Hope Smith, Alfred Evans, Milton Harvey, Yusuf Bell, Angel Lanier, Jeffrey Mathis, Eric Middlebrooks, Christopher Richardson, Latanya Wilson, Aaron White, Anthony Carter, Earl Terrell, Clifford Jones, Darren Glass, Charles Stevens. Aaron Jackson, Patrick Rogers, Luby Jeter, Terry Pugh, Patrick Baltazar, Curtis Walker, Joseph Bell, Timothy Hill, Eddie Duncan, Larry Rogers, Michael McIntosh, Jimmy Ray Payne, John Porter, William Barrett, and Nathaniel Cater. Let's take a moment of silence to honor these victims. Thank you. We know that nothing that we do here will bring those lost lives back. But it is our sincere hope that this eternal memorial located right here at Atlanta City Hall for all to see freely, that this will serve as a source of peace and strength for our community in our entire city. Uh, thank you to the artist, Gordon Huther, for creating a thoughtful and touching space for reflection and remembering all those who we lost. Thank you to the task force uh, chaired by Frank Ski and uh, all of the members, Valerie Jackson, and so many of you that contributed to this task force. Thank you to uh, the installers who uh, installed this piece and to uh, the Department of Interset, uh, Enterprise Asset Management for these beautiful grounds that we stand on today uh, in the city of Atlanta. Um, I thank you all, those of you that are family members of the victims for you being here. Thank you uh, for your courage and for uh, being here and participating in this memorial. And to all of those who were part of the search and rescue team, those that came out to look and to support, and for those whose prayers uh, were given in honor of these tragic souls lost. We thank you, and we thank you all for being here for this very spe uh, special moment in the city of Atlanta. Thank you. <laughs>